Or what? Like, make, oh, yeah, we got you, bro. You got, got one? Right. Mm-hmm. Joy, do me a favor. Mm-hmm. Hit that button. No, you want to get out your seat yeah, for me. No and see where it's set. See where it says, um, no, you hit, yeah, just hit that button. Great. That's all I need. Thank you. Okay, make um, a callers uh, aware that um, we'll take their calls, but uh, give us a minute because we already got like one, two already calling in. All okay. right. Gotcha. Oh, I said it did fight the power. 16. We'll bring you back to once uh, fight the power. Uh-huh. That and uh, my common and John Legend joint. Huh? The common and John Legend joint to the uh, Selma movie. You know the soundtrack, the main song? You saw Selma? No. Oh, I did see it. That was a while the ago. The common and John Legend single. One day when the glory... Glory. Oh! Can, can you bring him back? When, you know when we, come, when we come back from um, that, that first break, can you bring him back to Public Enemy, Fight the Power? A little like thirty seconds of that, if you can. Let me try to see if I can get it. Hold on. Those are my two main. I wish you just. I wasn't thinking. I wasn't. Nah, that ain't you. That's my fault. I wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking. Any man, my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord.
All right, I got it. The Selma One Glory? Yeah. I got it. Alright, Jay, 30 seconds. Go with Joy, 30 seconds. <clears throat> Good evening, good evening, and welcome to another episode of Acres of Diamonds. I'm your host for the day, this evening rather, Brother Jihad Ahmed. We got a great show in store for you. You already say. There's always one in the crowd. There's always one. There's always one, Dr. That. Umar. There's always one. I heard that high pitch. I was about to say. Welcome, everybody. We've got a great show. Today's date is Monday, January the 28th. And this indeed is a special show for a lot of reasons. Why is that? First reason is because we never did a guest back to back before. No, we didn't. Never, ever in the history of us being here, going on one year, we had guests. We had my guests come back once or twice. Yes. But never. Never ever the following Monday. And I'm very excited about our guest, and everyone knows who he is in the studio, and everyone out there in Facebook land knows. If you are. What's wrong? I don't see none of the. None of my. Um, what? Things to tell me. That's okay. Who we are, what we do. <laughs> who we are, what we do. If you turn around, <laughs> <laughs> you'll see who you right are. there is in blue. <laughs> No, no, I know Acres of Diamonds. Oh, you talking about Black, Black Talk Radio? BlackTalkRadio.com. Elliot's, Elliot's going to get this. And I was just saying, didn't I tell you before we went on? It's time for Awakening. I got to write everything there down. There you go. But I, I do know the telephone it. number. Okay? You know the telephone number? And I, I, promise, I promise when I come back there from, we'll have all of it. I'll have it all. There you go. Happy birthday, Jay. Happy birthday. Thank you. We have a right. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank and you. my mother and father's anniversary. And I'm, I'm I saw that. 52 years. Yep. Yeah. Congratulations. Today. And it's somebody... My sister wrote it. 50. Yep. That's my buddy. I go back that's a long your, way That's your buddy. That's Y'all got close birthday. The first introduction. Today's mm-hmm. her birthday? Yesterday. Yes. Yesterday. Yes. And today's mom and dad's Oh, anniversary. that's great, man. Yep. See, and that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Black love. Yeah. Okay. 52, 52 years. years. Mm-hmm. How did that's they right. hold... How did they hold it on? Mm. How did they hold it together? Fighting and cussing. <laughs> and a lot of, and a lot of making but love and love I'm sorry with love love I'm sure love, they have a lot of love love, love, love yeah. always yep before I do anything and we go into the show I have to acknowledge everyone that's here in the studio Dr. Umar Johnson is definitely with us he's going to be coming back and he's going to be talking we're going to be talking about education okay. racism okay. and black love why is it important for us to have black love mm-hmm. why is it important for us to have our own educational system Mm-hmm. Last week, we did not have an opportunity to talk about a lot of the things that we wanted to talk about. So tonight, we want to kind of make up for it. But as I always do, I want to say good evening to Joy. Good evening, Joy. Hey, good evening. I switched it up. I oh, see you. Yeah. Yeah. He was ready. He's like, oh, he's going to I wanted, he wanted to get that <laughs> respect. He wanted respect on his name. Nah, it's always there. Joining me in the studio, <laughs> never failing me anytime, my partner in crime, Troy. When you say a name, put some respect on it. Jones. Yeah. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here this evening. You know, it's always a pleasure. You could have been anywhere tonight. I chose to be right here. But you chose to be here. And I'm grateful for right. you and Joy being here this evening. Troy, what's going on, man? What is the skinny? What is the rumor? What is going down so, across the town? So we're going to go right into that and yeah. then the other stuff. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, All right. Great, great, great. Well, and there it is. Oh, Y'all hear the music. Whoa, whoa. He's out. He just got out the other day, DMX. And he performed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he, he was telling me that. I didn't ja, know he performed. Uh, ja Rule couldn't, 
couldn't couldn't perform. Mm-hmm. So he stood. He, uh, he stood in. That's what's up. And they say he tore it up. I'm sure he did because that's yep. DMX, the dog. The dog. Burr, burr. I was trying to find some dog. Couldn't find. I couldn't find any. But um, you know, he just got out of um, the Federal Correction Institute in West Virginia. Um, he was there for uh, tax evasion, so he was there for a year. Unfortunately, I know he's happy to be out um, and start start his career again. Or keep his career moving, you know, because I, I was just reading he had a couple of projects uh, going on, maybe some movie stuff, and of course some more album stuff. So you know he's going to be out there doing it. He still owes the federal government two point three million in restitution. That's a lot of loot, but I'm sure he'll get it, which it'll be no problem, you know. But DMX is out, so all the fans, you know, you know, I'm a fan, you know. I can't wait to see him perform and do his thing. You know, he's going to go back onto that show. What's that woman? Um, What's that? Somebody, somebody fix my life. Yeah, he left a young Van Zandt. See? That's oh, really? Why, cause you, I couldn't remember her name. He out of Van Zandt? I don't remember her name. She, he's going to do another show with her. Because remember the last show, he like jumped up and cursed her out? And she's irritating. <laughs> but she's an amazing she's black woman. very amazing. Yeah. So, um, that's good. I wanted to say something about the Black Panther. You know, they won the SAG Award. Uh, the whole cast, and I think uh, somebody, I think it was, um, uh, what's her name, uh, the one I like, uh, Jordan. Oh, what's um, her girl name? Bassett. Uh, yeah, Miss Angela Bassett, mm-hmm. she mm-hmm. said her mm-hmm. husband, uh, mm-hmm. kind of, well, she didn't say, but they were saying mm-hmm. he might have spilled the beans a little bit about how um, everybody in the cast is probably going to be coming back on mm-hmm. the uh, Black Panther 2 or the sequel, oh, wow. so that's going to be, that's going to be definitely cool, you got people mm-hmm. coming Coming from the grave, and they're gonna be back on there. So all, all, I can't wait all, for all those people, they gotta come back. Yeah. I mean, but yeah. the, how did the movie end? I, for, I, I forgot. I forgot how Black Panther is. Yeah, I forgot too. So. I know all I know is what kind of for life. Kind of for life? Well, forever, but who cares? <laughs> who cares? Who uh, cares? On a sadder note, um, mm-hmm. did you check out this Michael Jackson thing yet, uh, Jay? Joy, did you look at it yet? Let's I, have it, I, man, because well, I'm in defense of MJ. I know you are. He's dead, man. He can't yes. defend himself. He can't. You have to do it, Jay. So, all right, here we go. <laughs> you they got spent it, Jay. Uh, $20 million, right? Mm-hmm. $23 million. He gave that guy $20 million. Something. The first accuser, right? Yes. So, it's two accusers on there that said that Michael Jackson did what he did, did, what he did to him. Yes. Now, they released this movie, this documentary. It's mm-hmm. coming on HBO in March. Yes. Right? right? And um, four hours long. Now, the family said that it's, this is tabloid exposure. At his best, yeah. At his they best. said they never talked to, they anybody, never talked to anybody on his side. Just these two just individuals. These, I think now, two or three. The, the yeah. main guy on there, yeah. $20 million was given to, I believe, his family years ago. Yes. Because they said Michael was not the type that wanted to fight. He didn't want right, to go to him. He just was like, look, man, I want to do my performance. I just want this to go away. Right. So... There's nobody to speak out for Michael Jackson, yeah. so the estate put this. I mean, it's got to be hard on his kids. He's got those three kids out yeah. in the day, and it's got to be really, really, really rough on them. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're talking bad about their father. Yeah. I'm gonna leave it at that. No, no, no. Because I, I, I know, I, I know hear, you're a fan. I want to hear I your thoughts. Joy's definitely. I, I want to hear your thoughts. I'm a fan up until somebody proves me otherwise. Right. I mean, you know, I, I spoke to a couple people about the whole uh, settlement thing. And that happens. That goes on. You know, mm-hmm. artists don't want their name slandered and dragged through the media. Or you know, because it could exactly because it could kill their career. You know, so they will settle, even though they weren't wrong. I mean, they were they were right and didn't do anything. You know, is that what is that MJ's and they were or and still yeah? Settle. Mm-hmm. Is that where we we're how are we looking at MJ? Yes. Okay. I just have a problem with you know I'm close to two hundred million dollars has been put out there to these people, over 20 or however many uh, victims or whatever, or accusers, and there's no truth to it. There's no possible truth. Maybe there is. Maybe. I don't know. My, my mic on? Yeah, yes, sir. I okay. knew it. Go ahead. I knew it. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I like MJ too, but I'm just like... I, I was a very big Michael Jackson fan uh-huh. growing up in North Philly. Okay. I danced, I had the gloves, every jacket, every you had coat. Jackets? Oh. <laughs> Still mad at my mom because she didn't buy me tickets to the concert. Mm. But nonetheless, that campaign to recast Michael Jackson in the image of a pedophile mm-hmm. 
was a music industry mafia hit. Mm. And what I mean by that, Sony Records, who many would, including myself, allege is responsible for Michael Jackson's assassination. Mm, I believe that. They wanted his percentage of the Beatles catalog back. And they wanted his percentage of the Elvis Presley catalog. Now, do they still, do Michael Jackson's family still own them? I'm not quite sure. But from what it appears, they have it back. Mm -hmm. Just like it appears that Prince's estate Mm -hmm. has sold to Warner Brothers Mm -hmm. the unpublished catalog. Now, Michael Jackson the number one selling musician of all time was in debt to Sony because they sabotaged his last album, Invincible. They sabotaged Invincible on purpose, hoping that that would force him to sell to them his portion of the Beatles catalog, the most popular white group in Western history. And he owned Elvis Presley. And Elvis as well. But Mike said, y'all sabotaged that album. I'm not giving y'all my catalog. That pedophile piece was a stunt to get him incarcerated. Put him further into debt. Where he would have no choice but to give it up up behind bars. And let me say that whether these men are innocent or guilty, and I believe Mike is innocent. I believe Bill Cosby, largely innocent. R. Kelly, I still need more proof, but he appears to have possibly been guilty. But I don't believe in persecuting anyone without evidence. Allegations is not evidence. You can have a million people. There's a million people who will tell you I'm not opening up no school. But on February 14th, guess what? I prove all million wrong. It doesn't matter. Quantity does not make the truth. And unfortunately, we live in a world where public opinion determines the truth, not evidence. Here's the point I want to make. Cosby, Michael Jackson. And this is not a coincidence that this Michael Jackson documentary is coming out now. This is part of the new face of white supremacy. Okay, the feminist agenda. Okay. To castrate, publicly assassinate the image of the black male, guilty or innocent. Mm. So when they start locking all of us up for alleged sex crimes, no one will care. Remember, study any great Holocaust. I don't care if you look at Hitler's Holocaust of the European Jews. Mm. I don't care if you look at the European Holocaust of the African, the greatest or should I say the worst in human history. You can look at the German Holocaust of the British. You can look at any Holocaust in human history. Before you exterminate the victim, you must exterminate their image in the society. If you don't kill their image before the people, before you start locking them up and killing them, the people will fight against them. Quick example, hip hop. The hip hop community is complicit in the mass Fratricide in the black community, black on black crime. Our gangster rappers are going down in history as being the only population in human history who deliberately participated in the extermination of the image of their own black males. No other people has ever volunteered to participate in the assassination of their own image. Smoking weed, selling drugs, killing black men, exploiting black women, uh, rampant European materialistic consumerism. And so guess what? The rap industry has done enough by itself without Hollywood. They don't need to make another Boys in the Hood. They don't need to make another Minister Society. How about that? They don't need to make another movie killing the image of the black man because our gangster rappers have done it enough. And so now when they lock us up, When the police kill us, no one speaks up because the hip hop industry has already castrated the image of the black male. I hope y'all hear that, folks. I hope you're listening. Yeah. 
You just I, answered three questions. I, I think he answered <laughs> more questions because I know that a couple of those things I wanted to talk about. But I agree with that all completely. And you hit it on the go, go ahead, finish, finish your part. What else? We're still, still on the news. We're still on the news. We had special commentary. By, I, I by, think we by left Dr. the Umar. news. <laughs> no, keep on. Keep but uh, no, I got, I, got, I got some more stuff. Uh, we already heard, uh, but we talked about MJ mm -hmm. and the um, and like Doctor said, the one on R. Kelly is still out. We're not we're not sure, but uh, we'll come back to that at a later. Point. Do, you, do you think he's going to? Be, do you think he's going to be? Uh, Brought to brought to trial for this. Oh, for uh, the, um, MJ. I mean, not MJ. Uh, R. Kelly. R. Kelly. It depends on statute of limitations. What are the statute of limitations in Illinois? Mm -hmm. The other thing too that I've noticed is. Well, what about the one where he he flew some young lady that was underage uh, from one one state to another? But when was, was that? You see, yeah. the statute of limitations. Now, a difference between Illinois and Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. The age of sexual majority in Pennsylvania is sixteen. The age of sexual majority in Illinois is 17. Mm -hmm. So those 16-year-old girls, had he been in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. could not qualify right. a statutory rape. Right. But in Illinois, they do. Right. Mm. But again, the question is, what is the statute of limitations? Mm -hmm. and, when, yeah. and I would also say this. If all of those people who were interviewed on that show, if it comes out that they can all be held responsible as accomplices oh, and accessories... Right. I'm quite sure this whole thing is going to go away because none of them are willing to go. That was not the point. The point was to expose him for not giving them the pay that they was looking for. And the trifling thing about the whole thing, it was never about the kids. The documentary wasn't even about the kids. It was about I didn't become rich. I didn't become famous. You didn't make me your woman. So now I'm going to expose you. But the sad part of that is what? If you would have made me rich, if you would have made me famous, if you would have made me your woman, I wouldn't have said a word. Yeah, you would never saw any of this. Huh? Mm. So we are going to move on. <laughs> we touched on R. Kelly. Uh, you heard about C. Murder. He was denied a retrial in his 2009. Who's murder? C. Murder? C. Murder. Uh, um, Masterpiece brother. Masterpiece brother. Oh. They said he was at a show. He just did a show. And uh, there was an altercation. A 16-year-old uh, 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 juvenile got killed. And he said, uh, mass, I mean, they said C. Murder was the uh, person who, who shot him, and uh, he's been locked up since. You know, like last year, they gave him a new trial, or they gave him a new, uh, I believe it was a new trial. But then they just ruled that um, there was enough evidence. Apparently, the person who fingered C. Murder in the whole thing uh, wasn't a, a good witness um, and some other nonsense. So I guess he's, uh, he's not getting out. I, I guess they're going to wait to see if they have any more appeals. To see what else they can do to, uh, you know, to help his brother with regards to uh, Master P. But that's the thing with C. Murder. I thought he was going to get out, you know, based on the, uh, this new evidence, but apparently not. Uh, moving on to something that's kind of crazy in my opinion, but we already see it happening. Uh, it's going on all over the, the country, and that's this whole marijuana bit. But the reason why I'm bringing this up, it seems like Wait. Joe Montana, and everybody knows Joe Montana, the quarterback, mm -hmm. the, uh, the Hall of Fame quarterback. Uh, just dropped seventy five million dollars. Him and some investors, seventy five million dollars, seventy five million million, into a company in uh, in California that's going to be selling uh, marijuana, marijuana products, everything about marijuana. Seventy five million. It's it's like it's startling. It's shocking. You know, um, I don't even know what to say. You know, they just opened the uh, marijuana dis dispensary. Yeah, Joy, thank you. Uh, right down here in Center City uh, last week. I think it was last week they opened it Thursday, Thursday or Wednesday. Um, I now I don't think right. Pennsylvania has yet approved recreational. No, money. not yet. Okay, no, it's no, only it's medical, right? Okay, exactly. Exactly. But this is it. Like, but it's going there. Like if you're blind and you can't see. I have a friend. Or well, you have cancer. No, you're have in pain. Who she showed me her her um, marijuana card? No, what is it called? What? When you gotta go to the doctor get a prescription, and she smokes it out of a like an e-cigarette. Really? Yeah. So she got a marijuana card. I don't know what the card well, we're is. We're definitely going to be and talking. She got about a pipe. Later on, <laughs> later on in the show, we're going to be talking uh, about that with uh, mm -hmm. Doctor Umar. Okay. You know his thoughts on it. You know, not right now, right. but later on. Okay. <laughs> we just started off right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I know how um, you do, <laughs> uh, What else I got? Um, a couple, two more things. Two, two more things, okay. and then we'll be done, and we'll go ahead and take a break. But um, you know, uh, Harvey Weinstein, mm -hmm. he's back in court. Um, he just got finished. Um, 
being denied uh, or uh, the judge refused to dismiss, dismiss his case. He wanted to throw it out on that uh, rape allegation. Mm -hmm. And they were like, nope, uh, we're moving to trial. He's, he's coming up this May, is scheduled for trial. But he's got uh, a new legal team, apparently. He got rid of uh, one of his... Uh, his, uh, he might be all right now that Hardelli is in the line. Weinstein, the Weinstein might get up. Nah, I think well, there's another name y'all leaving out. Who? Mr. Epstein. Who's that? The man who used to flow, uh, to, who used to fly former President William Jefferson Clinton to his exclusive island in the Caribbean, which they call Sex Island. Oh wow! Which allegedly is a pedophile island. And he also flew there not only with Clinton, but he also flew there with Harvey Weinstein. He just had a case in West Palm Beach where everybody thought he was going to jail for sex abuse. And guess what? He walked. And everyone in the case said the only reason why he walked is because of who he is and where he is. Mm -hmm. The only reason why Harvey Weinstein is going to be retried is because he's not far enough up the ladder of white power to walk. And Epstein's charges are worse than Weinstein. Weinstein abused women. Epstein abused women and children. Mm. Wow. Wow. Epstein. Yeah, because when you said that, I'm like, we I don't know. Oh, oh, let us be Definitely. clear. Let us be clear about something. When you dealing with white supremacy, you dealing with secret societies, yeah. you dealing with pedophilia, and you're dealing with resource control and you're dealing with Satanism. Let me say it again. When you're dealing with white supremacy, you are dealing with pedophilia, resource control, Satanism, and secret societies. They go hand in hand. And that's why when you look at Hollywood, you look at the music business, in order to break the $500 million ceiling, you normally have to pledge yourself either to Satanism, a secret society, homosexuality, or pedophilia. The last thing, last thing we're going to talk about is this Terry Crews and D.L. Hughley. Ooh, I got some thoughts on that. Now, I got a little sound bite. I want y'all to eat, Jay? Play the sound bite. I'm going to play the sound bite. Let's hear that sound bite. Is this the sound bite by Terry Crews or This is D.L. Okay. on his point. You know, I'm only going to play a little bit because you know, he goes into some other stuff. But here's the sound bite so y'all can hear real quick. Facebook Live. What's they that? said that. What about this fourth player named? Because I mean, look at Terry Crews. He's like this big. He's a black guy. He's, he's strong. He's got muscles and everything. I'm, I'm thinking like, nah, dude, you should have went up in this grill, man. My personal opinion is that he was concerned about his future in the industry as a black male, given Harvey Weinstein's power. And when we think about sexual abuse and harassment. It is more about power than it is the sex. Mm -hmm. And so for Harvey Weinstein to do that, assuming Terry Crews is not bisexual, that was a power play. Not only am I going to harass you, I'm going to do it in the presence of your spouse. Mm. Pure power play. Wow. And I think that as a black male, a dark skinned black male in Hollywood, mm -hmm. he looked at this and said, this man has power. And I have to be very careful because even if he's found guilty, 
That has nothing to do with how he can backdoor sabotage my career the same way we've seen Colin Kaepernick's career get backdoor sabotaged. Even though it was illegal for the presidents of the NFL teams to collude to keep him from being hired, we found out a few months ago that's exactly what they did. So that conversation about power and oppression is a very sensitive conversation. Because everyone has an opinion as to how you should react yeah. when your livelihood is at stake. It's no difference than in slavery. When black women willingly, not because they wanted to. And not because they couldn't fight back. They went along with the sexual abuse right. Right. of the slave master, right. not because they wanted it. Because I don't believe in any Negro bedwinch theory that says black women secretly lusted for the white slave master. I don't agree with that garbage. But I do want to say this. They went along with it because guess what? By having sex with him, my husband wouldn't get whipped as much. Yeah. Having sex with him, my babies wouldn't be sold eight states away. So there was a strategy to it. You look at Queen Cleopatra and how she slept with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. She wasn't in love with those Europeans, but she did it as a way to ease the oppression that those two devils put upon the backs of Africans and Kemet. Mm. There you have it. That's good. <laughs> that's, that's just a good. start, guys. That's just a, a start. A little taste. <laughs> a little taste. An Ooh. Well. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to take a break and we come back. We're going to talk more with Dr. Umar about his school. Why is it so important for him to establish this school? We're going to talk about different aspects of the school. But, you know, I know people have been saying, why is the school so important? Why is his school so important? Why not a charter school? Why not a public school? Why not an independent school? We're also going to talk about racism. Where did it come from, from his research and his, uh, his thoughts? Where did racism come from? Where did it all start for us mm -hmm. to be looked at as we the the worst thing on this planet. And we're going to talk about black love. Why is black love so much needed in, in, in our homes, in our families, in our marriages, in our relationships, and why we can't come together as black people? I think that all of those three questions and so much more is going to come up. And uh, we're very looking forward to this conversation. We're going to take a break. You're listening and watching Acres of Diamonds. We'll be right back. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. To move this camera right here like that. You gonna do the rabbit choice? To providing insurance solutions for our Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we was. <laughs> we was. <laughs> this high, high. Yeah, so we're good on all ends. You got that public enemy joint, Troy? Oh, don't forget nah, that glory. You want to do glory? You got the glory joint? Glory joint, right? Glory. No, 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 no. You're good. You like oh, my new growth now. Come on. Oh, yeah. you this? This is the piece, right? Yes, sir. That's right. Put your decorations up. <laughs> Y'all seen that movie? Yeah, mm -hmm. I saw Selma. Huh? It was produced by a black woman, which is a good thing. I want to talk about black Hollywood. I don't know why she saw the need to highlight his marital infidelity. And when asked about it, you might want to bring that up. Why did she? Yeah. She's hurt. You talking the one that made the movie? Yeah, the one that made the movie. That's important to black women. Uh, it's not important to tear down heroes. No, I don't think we um, should tear down heroes. And we're the only people I know who, when they honor their heroes, they have to highlight everything they did wrong. Thomas Jefferson was a pedophile right here in Philadelphia. Used to molest black girls. Sally Hemmings was his favorite. Even took her on the boat with him back to Europe for vacation. You never hear white folks bring it up. Yes. We don't even know 
Why without a timeout. What movie is this like, from? And it's like Selma. somebody could be working Selma? doing something yes. well. Yes, it will still go like, there. Oh, no, but, he, but you know he didn't do this. You know she didn't do that. You ready? What yes. You Everybody ready? Coming back. Well said, well said. Okay. Good evening and welcome back. Welcome back to the show. That musical selection was a very, very deep uh, selection. And that was uh, by choice by Dr. Umar Johnson. And, you know, I was asking him about the songs. I never, I admit it, I didn't see that movie, Selma. And you were telling us during the break a little history about that particular movie. Selma. Yes, uh, produced by a black woman, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was especially a great thing that she choose, she chose to produce a historical movie, something that was relevant, right. uh, not one of these sensationalized romance violence movies that most black film producers are addicted to. Um, so I was very pleased with her choice to take a portion out of the civil rights struggle and highlight it, which is the March to Selma. Okay. However, I took issue with the fact that she saw the need to enunciate uh, Dr. King's uh, infidelity to his wife. And so for me, as I was saying with the queen earlier, we are the only people who have a need to expose the faults of our heroes and sheroes. Mm -hmm. And we will pay more attention to the fault mm -hmm. than the virtue. Mm -hmm. Now, I look at a Dr. King compared to a Barack Hussein Obama. Mm -hmm. Barack Obama did nothing of substance for black people and is totally honored. Dr. King gave his life for black folks had his house bombed twice with his children and wife in it, went to jail more than 200 times. Here's a man with a doctorate degree. His father was the top minister in Georgia. He could have easily become a T.D. Jakes. He could have easily been a klepto dollar. But instead, this brother said, I know I'm edgy. Klepto. <laughs> on purpose, by the way. He could have easily done that, but instead, no, nah, on purpose. He decided to give his life for his people's liberation. And whenever there's a conversation about Dr. King, they bring up the infidelity as opposed to the sacrifice that he made. They? Who are you talking about? Because I look at as Dr. black King, people. Like we look at him almost like Jesus in the black family with his picture. You know, so mm. I, I, I'm, I'm, I just you know, like. If you go mm -hmm. to any Dr. King clip mm -hmm. on most social network sites, mm -hmm. people's pages, if you go to YouTube and look them up, if it was uploaded by a black person, mm. if you read the comments, you will see okay. a overwhelming amount of comments focused on his infidelity to his wife, which ironically, mm. Queen Mother Coretta never spoke about. She refused. Even after he died, they pressed her. Black and white reporters, how did you feel about your husband's extramarital affairs? And guess what she said? What extramarital affairs? Mm. My husband's work is too great mm -hmm. for me to allow any one of you mm -hmm. to try to tear it down. Because in tearing Dr. King down, you not only tear me and my family down, you tear black America down. She was thinking about the people more than herself. Which I would even compare to Emmett Till's mother. Who when Mammy Till Mobley, rest in peace, I visited her grave in Chicago with her sons a couple years ago. And they're actually buried in the same cemetery with Noble Drew Ali, the father of the Moore Science oh, wow. Temple. They're in the same Chicago cemetery. I don't know if Fred Hampton is there, though, because I don't remember seeing his grave. But nonetheless, mm -hmm. this is a woman who had to face her son's body mm -hmm. after being left for days in the river, already beginning to rot. Mm -hmm. And she said, take it off. Mm -hmm. take, the cat, take my baby out the ground because they buried him before she got there mm -hmm. without her permission. She said, we flying this back to Chicago. And white Mississippi didn't want her to take the body back. So she had to get on the phone and she had to call black U.S. congressmen. She had to call Chicago politicians to force the Mississippians to let her bring her son's body back to Chicago. Why, 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 because she wanted the world to see what America let happen to her son, for which not a single person was persecuted. Both white men were acquitted of the crime of murdering Emmett Till. And guess what? After they were acquitted, because of the double jeopardy law, you can't be tried twice for the same crime. Can you believe those two Neanderthals turned around and sold their story 
to a popular magazine detailing how they murdered Emmett Till mm -hmm. and could not be retried because of the double jeopardy law. Wow. And what, the, what, what, what just happened a couple months ago, the white woman, mm -hmm. yes. okay, confessed to an author allegedly she lied about that she lied about the whole thing. Yeah. And they refuse, the Department of Justice refuses to go after her because she's old. Could you imagine if a black man was responsible for the murder of a little white kid? He could have been 150, they would have dug him up. Yeah, I, I went to the, uh, the, the African American Museum in DC, DC. Mm -hmm. and yeah, you, um, spotted you saw exhibit. The, the exhibit. They won't yeah. even let you take pictures in there. No, they don't. They don't I think that was the, was that the original casket? Yes, that that's he was the original in? casket. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and the story, her story is there. It, it yeah. And I don't think she's deceased yet, by the no, way. She's still alive. Mm -hmm. The deep part, I remember as a child growing up, um, you know, we remember seeing the, the pictures yes. on the Jet and Ebony magazine. Yes. Yes. His face was... Just swollen. Whew. Speaking of the Smithsonian, if I could for a minute. Sure, go ahead. I want to show you how hypocritical white supremacy is. Because they won't take $500 million and fix the public schools in Philadelphia. They won't take $500 million and give it to our ex-offenders so they can start businesses since no job will hire them. They won't take that $500 million and create some sort of program for black elders so they can get the quality of health care that they deserve. But they'll take $500 million. President George W. Bush, by the way, authorized that. And they took $500 million to build a museum to black folks. But you won't use that same amount of money to invest in the development of black America. And when you go to the Smithsonian, if your eyes are now wide open, your third eye, you will totally miss the fact that the whole museum is an insult to black people. When you begin your tour, you begin with slavery, level one. And then you move up to Reconstruction, excuse me, Civil War, level two, Reconstruction. Then you go to Civil Rights. Entertainment on the top. Pop What's at the top? Entertainment. The museum ends with a whole floor to entertainers yeah. and another floor to athletes. How in the hell does Serena and Venus get a shiny platinum looking statue? But Harriet Tubman ain't got one. How in the hell does Michael Jordan get a big screen TV with all of his highlights and LeBron James with another big screen TV with all of his highlights? But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Marcus Garvey are squinted, squeezed up in a corner somewhere. And if you don't pay attention, you might not even see him. You go to the American Jewish Museum. You got one right here in Philadelphia. Show me a floor full of entertainers and athletes. You can't find it nowhere. No floor on historically black colleges. No floor on police genocide. No floor on all the inventions that black people make. Do you realize the reason we in here right now? Because of a black man, black man named Dr. Lewis Latimer wrote the textbook on how you can light up a city at night. They brought him to China to teach the Chinese who we think so smart. But the Chinese needed a black man to come and show him. Then they took him to Europe. Then they took him to Canada. The only reason why you can see at night is because of a black man. But guess what? There's no floor for that. But we can give you a whole floor to a whole bunch of white woman loving White people loving Negro athletes and entertainers who do next to nothing for black folks. That museum is a disgrace and it's not over. Because once you go through them five, six floors, you're a little hungry, right? <laughs> you're a little hungry. And then you go down in the dining hall and guess what they selling? Pork chops, chicken wings, fried chicken, watermelon. That's a damn cool museum. That ain't no black history. That's coon history. Listen. And it's expensive. I walked away. I know you did. That food is expensive. I didn't eat there. Why not have cuisine right. from the different African nations right. from which we come? 
Show some authentic Ghanaian cuisine, Cameroonian, uh, Ethiopian, Benin cuisine, Liberian cuisine, Sierra Leone. Now nah, we don't want to show you how they ate before we snatched them. We want to show you the diet that we gave them that they still got to this now, day. Now, now what, what about what about people that are saying, well, Dr. Umar, I, I feel what you're saying and how it's, uh, the, the museum starts in the bottom and how up at the top, but at least they are highlighting the accomplishments that black athletes have made and rappers and music. Question. If LeBron James goes down in history as the greatest basketball player of all time, let's say he goes down as the greatest athlete of all time. Mm -hmm. Is that accomplishment greater than what Queen Mother Harriet Tubman did? Oh, Is it greater than Dr. George Washington Carver? So then why in the hell is he on the top floor with a big screen and a statue and none of our real heroes and sheroes are represented in that same way? That museum? What did I just say earlier? Before you kill the body, kill the image. Do you realize that Chinese people are flying to America just to see that? I want to see what the black history was. Arabs, Latinos, East Indians, they go there and you know what they leave with? Let me tell you what they leave with. They were in Africa running around naked because they don't give you no prehistory of Africa. That museum doesn't give you any of the great African creations and accomplishments. Uh-uh, they start you in slavery. So this is what you get. They were, they, let me give you what, they were running around naked in Africa. The white man graciously came and saved them from their heathenism, enslaved them for their best interests to teach them Jesus. They didn't know what was good for them, so they fought against the slavery, not knowing that God chose us white folks to make you all civilized. But because y'all kept on crying, we freed you. And the minute we freed you, your ass picked up a basketball and a tennis racket. Tell me what's so great about that. The museum sends a message that you was you only wanted to be free to shake your booty and play some ball. Mm. Sing a song. And sing a song. That museum is a disgrace. Not to mention it's put together by who? The Smithsonian. Wait a minute. Is it the Smithsonian Institute? The same museum that took a black boy from Central Africa by the name of Atabenga, called him a pygmy, and put him on display in the New York City Zoo and took him around the country at all the different city fairs? Inside of a cage with a monkey. What year was this? This was 1916, 1918, 1920. And then the black church organized to get out of Benga, taken out of the cave with the monkeys and the gorillas. And guess what he did after they let him out? Took his own life. It's a whole book on out of Benga. The Smithsonian Institute has been one of the major purveyors of negative information about African history. How in the hell we let them build the museum? But meanwhile, you got the Philadelphia Afro-American Museum struggling to stay. Meanwhile, you got the Great Blacks and Wax Museum 90 minutes away in Baltimore. Why didn't they give that money to them? Why didn't the Philadelphia Museum get the money? Uh-uh. We want it in D.C. so we can control. We from it, right? And we want, we want to control the narrative of what the world thinks about black folks. Well, so true. true. We got a couple of calls. So true, so deep. Sure, we let's, can hear. Let's go right to the callers, man. All right. There's a couple that have been waiting a long time. Good evening, and welcome to the show. Good evening. Yes, hello. Good evening. Yes, how you doing? This is Abdul from Norfolk. Hey, Abdul. How you doing, man? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Oh, my God. Peace and love, black man. Okay, I'm not familiar with her per se, but I will say this. The switching or the neglect 
of attention paid to the black agenda has actually been supported by black people. We are so multicultural that we will stay multicultural even if it kills us. We are the reason that LGBT is being taken more seriously than black folks. We are the reasons that the illegal immigrants get more attention than black folks. We are the reasons that the feminist movement is being taken more seriously than black folks because our multiculturalism dictates that everyone else's issue is as important as ours. When Barack Obama took office, and totally dismiss black agenda issues and went straight to the LGBT issues. Not a single black leader, not a single black preacher, not a single black politician, not a single black organization dared to constructively criticize Barack Obama for taking everything black people fought for and giving it to gays, women, and illegal immigrants. This is our fault. And this is why for me, Dr. King is uncomparable. You cannot compare Dr. King to no one because he was a media genius. Dr. King knew how to keep the black agenda at the forefront of the American political conversation. And he did that the entire time he was in charge of the civil rights bill. But the minute he died, the very next year, we had the gay riots in New York. Within two years, the homosexual agenda started taking uh, over the black agenda. It eclipsed it. And so every president, if y'all notice this, has to create a domestic issue that can eclipse the black agenda issue. For Barack Obama, it was LGBT. I'm going to pay attention to gays so I don't have to pay attention to blacks. Donald Trump is women and immigrants. I'm going to pay attention to women and immigrants so I don't have to pay attention to blacks. And no matter who wins next, Kamala or Billary or whoever else they stick up there, they also have to find a domestic agenda item because everyone knows there's always domestic issues in any country. Mm. You have to pick and choose your domestic issues to make sure black people don't go no, don't get any attention. It's called controlled opposition. Create the opposition you want to make sure black people's issues never get the light of day. Yeah, so why why don't why don't our issues get the attention that it deserves? Because we're too handcuffed to multiculturalism. Black people are too insecure to stand out as black people. This is why we have all these different names, people of color. I see Negroes running around talking about some people of color. They didn't call you people of color in slavery. Why are you calling yourself people of color? Because you want to blend in with Arabs. You want to blend in with Latinos. You want to blend in with all these other folks who don't care nothing about you. Until we become unapologetically African and unapologetically black and stand as a group by ourselves. And the irony, y'all, is we're the only people who have a right to stand alone. Your history is unlike anyone else in America. Your politics is unlike anyone else in America. Your incarceration is unlike anyone else in America. Everything about the African is so unique that you have a right to stand alone, but you've been intimidated and bullied against being proud to be black in public. Nobody's proud to be black in public. Mm, there you go. We got, uh, Let's go back to the next caller. Caller, what's going on? Good evening, welcome to the show. Yes, hello. Peace and love, black man. Oh, no doubt. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Okay, let's go back to the next call. Uh, I'm good. Call. No. call you there. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Hello? Hello? Yes, hello. You're on with Dr. Umar Johnson. Oh, no, no. Okay. Yes, sir. February 14th, I'm making the announcement. Instagram and Facebook. Be tuned in on Facebook, Dr. Umar Ifatunde. On Instagram, Dr. Umar Johnson. Okay. Now, now, now speaking of the school, I don't, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but mm -hmm. I, I want to, you know, stick with in line a little bit. Sure. People have criticized you for the school. Yes. People have said that you have collected money throughout the country and donations and throughout the world. Throughout the world.